When we started out to build a demon, we didn't start out to compete with anyone else in the industry. We started out working from our background and being the best version of what we could be because we are completely different. We are not trying to be a sports car. We are not trying to be a pony car. We're trying to be a street strip muscle car and there's no one else in that space. We decided very early on in the project that the key to success on this car was gonna be the last 10th. And I don't mean the 10th of a second in the quarter mile. I mean that last 10th of effort that was gonna push you beyond an interesting stat into a stat that had never been done before. I mean, you start at the top of the list, drag radials. No one's ever put drag radials on a car. They've been available in the marketplace, but they've never been put on a production car. That's a first that we're very proud of. Transmission. No one has ever put a trans brake in a production car. No one has used the air conditioning system to cool the intercoolers. The Demon engine is all new. It's not a tuned up version of our Hellcat engine. The only part that carries over is the cylinder head. We deck honed the block, which is something you see on high-end race car engines. New crankshaft, new connecting rods, new pistons, new camshaft, all new valve train, and a new larger 2.7 liter supercharger. So all of those things that make it a dedicated drag car, all of those things that make it awesome on the strip, you can completely modify. You can make this car as comfortable or as crazy as you want it to be. The two most common questions I get on Demon, number one, why'd you build a car like this? And the second question after that, how much horsepower does it have? And I always tell everybody, I'll tell you the horsepower, it's amazing, but I want to explain to you the full performance package and everything that that horsepower enables. I'm gonna walk you through a virtual run of what it's like to drive a Demon. You strap yourself into a four point harness, take your red key, fire up the most powerful V8 production engine ever put in a car. Put your car into drag mode. Once you go into drag mode, your suspension is already pre-calibrated for maximum lift off the starting line. Activate your line lock. Start spinning your drag radios. Get them hot and sticky over 200 degrees. You literally have dripping rubber off of your tires. You creep to the starting line. Adrenaline is flowing. Your pre-stage are seven inches away from launching this car. Trans brake, check. Torque reserve, check. Yellow, 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 green, launch. You leave the starting line at 1.8 Gs, harder than any car has ever accelerated off the starting line. That force puts a ton of weight on the rear end of this car, forcing the front end up in the air. It pulls a wheelie. First gear, second gear, zero to 30 in one second. Third gear, you're now at 60 miles an hour in 2.3 seconds. Fourth gear, 5.1 seconds, you're doing 100 miles an hour. Now things are starting to settle in. You're really getting into this time warp and things are happening so fast, you're getting close to the end of the track. You're now doing 140 miles an hour as you cross the finish line in 9.65 seconds. You have just driven this production car faster than any production car has ever finished the quarter mile. So fast, in fact, that after the NHRA certified that time, they banned it from competition and it took 840 horsepower and 770 pound-feet of torque to do that. Being banned from the NHRA with this car at first sounds like a negative, but reality is it's really huge street credibility for this car. Even the National Hot Rod Association says you've pushed too far, you've done too much, you've broken a record that's not supposed to be broken in a production car. To me, that letter's a badge of honor.